And here we go. This is Flash at the Dropping a Coil Show with Larry Woods and Rob Works on the last day of April, Big 3 0, 2020. And a happy Corona to all of you out there in Radio Land. Uh, special thanks to Grim for helping us. Now, uh, Rob's doing the production this time, so I'm just uh, a guest on the show. And we're going to say hey to the bots and bodies that are available for your chatting entertainment. We've got Barman and Beetle, Grimner, Moose Girl, Kate, Anti, Chelsea Ding, Cirque, no honey. Dan Van Meter, Duh, Me, Frumpy, J. Dread, Meister Brow, Prince, Rob Works, Trust No One, Vanna Wyatt, Weather Dark, Woodman, Phantom, CC66, Chascura, Chloe, Cyborg, Noodle, Eman, Gromit, Guest, 96549, that's Larry Woods, and we've got J's, Nines, J's, Kiss, Matt WJ2002, Pone Sass, Sock Puppet, Smart Ads, The Holiest Roger, W4DKB, and VPix. And with that, I'm going to turn this here microphone over to Larry and Rob. Ready, guys? Thank you, Flash. Appreciate it. Hey there. Hey there. So. You've had an exciting week. Boy, howdy. Um, this week, we have gone, and between this week and this morning, I think we've cured every electrical problem in the world. And, yes, I am conceited. Uh, <laughs> the... The 12 circuit coil that I've been talking about works by itself really well, but it's part of a system, and that system is 12 squared and 12 cubed. Uh, the 12 cubed is the Hedron Collider. The 12 squared is Power for City. So... um We've got multiple coils of the same style interfacing with two different styles of coils, two other different styles of coils. So with three styles, three different, um, three different wrapping patterns, three different geometrical designs, we can now create all the power without magnets, without the hallback array, without any moving parts whatsoever, and induce into as many as 1,728 coils, circuits. That's insane. Um, um, they use a 12-circuit coil... You put in what we have lovingly called the Saturn coil, which is where uh, on the 12-circuit coil, everything is flat and horizontal as it goes around the coil. On the 12-circuit uh, the that's different, everything is vertical. And it slices through the coil. Uh -huh. This this Isn't creates the knife coil. The knife coil, yeah. This creates a magnetic spin in that coil, whether it's energized or not. And that magnetic spin, when it's introduced into one of the twelve circuit coils, the subatomic frequency combined with the geometric pattern makes both of those coils induce into one another. Resonate. Resonate. Yeah, that, that means that just by setting them together, one inside the other, 
the Saturn coil, the knife coil, creates a magnetic field that goes out in a knife edge along the outside equator. That knife edge interacts with the 12 circuit coil that's horizontal and sets up a charge. That's one of your normal 12 circuit coils that you've right. already developed. Right. That's our first, yeah. our first big original, coil. That your original 12 circuit design. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the only difference between the two 12 circuits, uh, other than the, the horizontal and vertical wire placement is that the horizontal, well, not, excuse me, the, the vertical coil, uh, it compresses the magnetic field in the vortex as well. And it's, if you put an iron rod in that, that would make an electric furnace. That you, yeah. that iron rod would heat up yeah, the red glow. hot real glow. quick. Yeah, it would glow. Yeah. Yeah. So we we've, we've got a lot of different things going on here. Yeah. Uh, the knife coil, uh, the Saturn coil, if you will, because it creates those rings around it in in magnetic field. That one is a trolling motor for a fishing boat. Okay. That one that one literally you can put it into the water and it moves the water. It it creates a magnetic rotational vortex, polarizes the water as it goes through and spins it, giving you propulsion for your boat. This is exactly how the, the uh, Soviets are making their new submarines that are silent. Right. So now we've got a coil that does that as well. So there's there's lots of different things. We perfected the speaker, uh, and that was really easy to do. You simply put a copper plate attach it to the coil so that it resonates with the coil. The coil does not distort frequency at all. There you've got your perfect pitch. You can't break that copper plate very easily, so you can get as low a bass or as high a, a treble as you want out of the whole thing, out of one hey, speaker. Yes. Can I interrupt you with a question? Certainly. Okay. If, if some if something is perfect in this realm that you're speaking of, does it have the uh, the problem of degradation where it can become imperfect? That harmonic that you hit, does it always stay there or can it degrade to a something that's not correct? Yeah, and that'll happen after it gets old enough for the plastic to, to degradate and collapse away from the wire so that it loses its shape. Now, How long? About a hundred years. About a hundred years. Wow. Okay. The plastic yeah. of the donut. Yeah. Wow. And okay, so that wasn't a dumb question. Then. No, not at all. I thought if it could be perfect, then it could be not perfect. What, what would you do then? <laughs> well, yeah. okay, well, sorry, Rob. There. <laughs> they, these things are going to break down now. They are going to break down. Uh, except for the circuit board in them, and that's a frequency modulation circuit board so that you can operate 50 and 60 cycle equipment off of it. Yeah. Except for that board. The first thing that will break down is the plastic, if you use plastic. If you use something else that doesn't break down, then whatever its breakdown time is. The second thing that will break down is the insulation on the wire itself. Right. And without it moving, that won't be a problem. The third thing that's going to break down is the magnets. The magnets are eventually going to lose their power. That's if you're using magnets to induce it. But we've just eliminated that problem with last Monday. 
that would have that would have made it break down in three or four hundred years. But we've eliminated that problem. So now the only thing that will ever break down in it in your lifetime and your kids' lifetime is going to be the circuit board, frequency okay, modulation okay. board. So, yeah, you got to send that perfect pitch to acquire your goal, right? That yeah. perfect frequency. Yeah. And, and all you need to do that is just when that card degradates, you just change it. Yeah. And it's a plug-and-play card that costs $2.50 right now. So that would be like using one of these USB ports. Just think. Yeah. maybe a little bigger, but the same principle. Well, like, like the, like the plug-and-play on, on any of the things that go into your computer. Mm-hmm. It's just a board that you plug in. Uh, should I post that link to the RLM chat that you uh, wanted to start out with today? Yeah, I'm going to give a little overview of that video or the... Audio. It's actually just an audio with a picture, but uh, uh, I'm putting above and beyond, right? The above and beyond video. Yeah, right there. Clink. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Talk talk a little bit about what that's about, Larry. Okay. Um, A few years back, we demonstrated to a group in in Texas, and. The head of that group was the military marine general that orchestrated Desert Storm, uh, the, the first Iraq invasion. We gave him at that time, uh, they, were, they were working on the Tesla Tower that's just outside of Waco. We gave them at that time the safe operating frequencies for the projected power out of that Tesla tower. They didn't have those. They do now. They do when I gave it to them back then. Uh, I didn't know if they were going to use them or not. We talked about 5G even back then, and this was a couple of years ago, and how harmful it was. And I, while I was there, I calculated the proper frequencies within their allotted frequency ranges to make them safe. This above and beyond came from Q. Uh, This is his message to me that they've got it and they're going to create 5G that is not harmful to us. And that's, that's all basically what this above and beyond flow state is about. It's music only and a picture. Uh, but I would really let like everybody to just look at parts of it, uh, skip way down to the end if you want. It goes from one coil to three coil interaction. The three coil interaction is the Tesla tower. Okay. Um, so it's it's a really telling video that doesn't tell anybody anything but me. And I really I like, like that. that. Hmm. Yeah, but you're one of the people we can trust to report back the truth. So it kind of gives you a little bit of a a star on your paper. It uh, made me happy. Well, um, so basically, you to, uh, what you're saying is that, that was a, a, a coded message, as if you will, to you that you've translated to us and that it means that they are they got the message they got got the right frequencies and they're going to implement right in the 5G technology and this exact pattern is our pattern this is the coil that I showed them right okay uh, that's what made me so happy about it. Uh, smoothed out the edges. This is the way the wire goes. This is demonstrating the magnetic field. Uh, it's got a lot of a lot of hidden things in that picture. Okay. All right. You're talking about the above and beyond picture itself, with the circle within a circle within a circle, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, that's it. Wow. What, so what exactly does that represent to the electrical brain guy or gal out there? Does that mean something to you people? This is the magnetic field traveling around the torus in the wire. The electric field traveling around the torus in the wire. It shows the expansion and contraction. It'll show you that three times around the outside or around the ring of this toroidal shape that there's a loop and that is a, another compression field in the ring of the torus that magnifies the strength of the magnetic field. Wow. <laughs> okay. I'm still I'm still where I started. I'll admit it, but oh, all right. But still, I, I do like the idea of uh, something with fewer, the, no moving parts at all to replace. Yeah, yeah. So we, just, we've eliminated all the moving parts now. Well, as a you know, as a mechanic, I'm not a mechanic, but as a mechanic would tell you, the more moving parts you got, the more problems. Yeah, that's so, my dad. I asked him, why didn't you get electric windows on that brand new car? Uh, yeah. And he says, something else to go wrong. Yeah. Well, see, keeping the simple, the simple things up to the front, I don't know who I was talking to about this, but all the true answers that we need are all buried in the past, and there are a lot of stories. you got to really dig to find them, but they're there. And I would consider that with that, Knowing the past and being able to use the tools of the present, you can do incredible things. Absolutely. And Frumpy, yes, indeed, you can teleport at will pretty soon. <laughs> the, the, the 12 cubed is going to open wormholes. That's wow, what that's designed for. And, yeah, and then you start talking, you know, over the, Average guys had just a little bit more unusual because yeah. these things are all in mo all right. I believe these movies have been made over these years to get us into certain groups of thinking, to accept certain things and not accept other things. And one of the things they've played with is the technology of the future. How do you present the technology of the future in 400 years? It's, it's a good story, <laughs> but... As it turns out, maybe they did know. They knew exactly where we could go if we wanted to go there. Right. You know the day I'm speaking of, Rob? Yeah. You know, it's like yeah. all these loops they've got us all trapped in. Is you have a brilliant idea, but if you don't get a patent, you can't manufacture it. So there's your first problem that you got to overcome. Well, so, if you uh, don't get a patent, somebody else will, or... Uh, like in Larry's case, uh, they don't, uh, they won't give you one. Um, exactly. So it's the catch-22 of, of all time. So basically, yeah, you're, you're going out there unprotected, which, <clears throat> you know, they've got that game sewed up, so. Um, well, maybe the show will be a little bit of help because we've, you know, we've documented this from the time we started yeah. it as a concept to the point you've got now with your coil that you made yourself. Yeah. I wouldn't say I've made anything yet. <laughs> okay. But, but well, you're going through I've, the stage. I've started the, I, yeah. the process. Anyways, um, yeah, the, uh, there's, what is it, 50,000 some odd patents that have been classified? Yep. Where people have, have went to patent some. You go to patent something, and it, it goes through a process, and one of the process, parts of the process is, can this be used for uh, national security? Or is this going to affect national security? And if they de declare or decide and deem that it is a threat to national security in any way, form, or fashion, it gets classified. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, I, I know those details. I'm sure there's a lot of people that out there that don't. Yeah. They're not aware. You know, they're not topics that get brought up very often. So the public is in a lot of uh, 
they're going to hate you for the, using it this way, but they're in a lot of ignorance of their surroundings. Well, yeah, people don't think of these things. Only right. Us, only us geeks and dorks. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, Rob, I more avoid those things than anything. I know they're there. I just don't participate in them, except for commerce. And that's all plastic and shit anyway now, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. There's no there's no humanity left in trade. It's all machines and necks. Stay six feet apart. Don't touch my broccoli or disease eating. Yeah. <laughs> hey. So but but in my opinion, this whole thing was all along it was just a way to cover up the crash of the dollar and get rid of a few older people. And maybe some of the sick ones and relieve the relieve the healthcare system of all its dead weight. Because you know, Rockefeller created all this shit. So they, they know what they've done. Most of the public doesn't. But of course that's a topic for a different kind of show. Uh um, to electrical stuff with Larry and Rob. <laughs> Sorry guys. I was killing the airtime because nobody was <laughs> shutting me up. Then, <laughs> Dana White just posted something uh, about the 75th FESIG meeting. Yeah. Uh, that's a really good one. They're all really good. This next meeting from May is going to have a free energy device in it, completely explained, and you'll be able to call in and ask questions and such. Uh it's going to be uh, eye-opening at the very least. And let me say this about that. There's lots and lots of people out there that have free energy devices. We are not the, the only ones. It's just that most of the people have got moving parts, bearings, axles, Lots of, of electronic stuff, things to go wrong. Right. And I'm cheap. I don't <laughs> want anything to go wrong. I want to buy it once and be done with it. And that's what we've tried to design, and I think we've come up with it. It's, yeah, not, it's, it's not a free energy electronic device at all. It is a strictly electrical device. Yeah. Oh. Straight, uh, straight uh, earth circuitry, basically. Yeah, yeah. You're. I'm an electric universe freak. Yeah. The the what we think of as dark matter or dark energy out there is yeah. that's the 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 photons. The that's a plasma field that we just can't see because there's no light shining on it and it's not creating a light. It's a plasma field emitted from all the stars. What we think is, is empty space is completely full of everything needed to build matter that just hasn't combined yet. It hasn't manifested yet, yeah. It's like a potential. Yeah. Yeah, just like your wall plug. The juice from your wall yeah. plug don't drip out onto the floor. It's yeah. just they're ready when you need it. Right. Fascinating stuff. There was something else you mentioned, and I'm trying to remember. The Vortex engine. I, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I dubbed it that. Was, it's not the first time I've actually heard this concept. Of, I had a guy... Tell me about an invention he had that uh, making boats that run on vortex, and they basically float on the water and they'll go insanely fast, and you, you can build them as big as you want and so forth. Talk about that. Uh, let's let's talk about the possibilities of the vortex engine, uh, including the hover cars and things like that. Okay. You can prove this concept by putting an anode and a cathode in plates that are separated by about a half of an inch. Uh -huh. Put that put that in liquid and provide it with a magnetic field. 
drop a drop of food coloring between those two plates and it will move out. It'll, it'll be forced out between those two plates. Okay. That, that proves the concept. All we've done is instead of just allowing it to have those two plates to go through, this particular coil makes those that magnetic field spin. It creates right. it creates its own tornado. Right. And the more the more voltage you put to it, the faster it's gonna spin. Okay. So that's we're gonna I'm I'm getting one of those coils. One of the guys built one already and I'm gonna get him to send it to me and turn it into a trolling motor for my boat. Uh huh. Look forward to the video of that. Yep, and if twelve volts don't do it, I'll hit it with twenty four. <laughs> right. That's you guys make so, it so easy. What? It is easy. Once you know why this stuff works, once you know why, how is easy. Okay. I can I, I can grasp the idea. So I'm following along week to week. And I think I'm learning shit. But oh, it's not, yeah. but it's uh, not hands-on and practical stuff. It's more like uh, concepts that prove other things are real or not real. Yeah. Well, maybe I'm taking it too deep. I, I tend to be for uh, I philosophize freedom on Tuesday. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. No, so, you know some. Sometimes my thoughts run well, a little. I don't. I don't pretend to understand it. Uh, in depth, the way Larry's describing, I mean, no, the, down to the math, and you know, I can't visualize magnetic fields. Uh, well, maybe it's not that the way Larry's talking about, but well, right, but he he's saying that it's a simpler way too, like opening the fridge and the fridge door, and the light comes on. Yeah, you know, and you don't see life like that, but sometimes that kind of happens. Happens to me anyway, where Oh, you put you put me in a different position to look at something, and I see it differently. And all of a sudden, I get what you're talking about. Where before that, I was looking at it from every wrong angle, and I wasn't seeing what I was being shown. So, you know, confusion. Hey, man, not everybody's smart. I, I'm just a simple guy. I got to, you know, I got to see it with my eyes. If you tell me a story like the one we're going through, when my wife does this to me, I, I never get a visual. So I tell her, I, I see your arms moving and you're talking a bunch of numbers, but if you put it on paper, I get it. And I've seen Doug make the same comment. He wants uh, schematics and diagrams and equations. And I, I just want to see a machine that works. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you convinced me by explaining how it works that it, this could work. So I now just want to see it. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Where do I buy one? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's, I'm a hard. That's basically yeah. where everybody's at. I mean, it's it's all good, and and it's like I was telling Larry, uh, very few people are going to have the patience or tenacity to even wind one of these coils. Uh, even if you gave one, gave them one with the pattern on it, uh, it's 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 a daunting undertaking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's still a lot of people that are unemployed right now and got lockdowns. And yeah, people yeah. need something to do. If they knew this was available to do it, I bet they'd yeah. do it. Well, I'm not saying there aren't because there's millions and millions of people out there. So, yeah. And, I mean, you yeah, and numbers, I mean. You're going to find the, uh, some. Like yourself, Rob, that yeah. took the time to invest in the to do it. Uh, not without but, the pattern. Well, if you listen, okay, but if you're listening to the show, you more than likely lean into that side of the of the choice. I'd like to make my own. Maybe, uh, yeah. <laughs> maybe it's it, yeah. Give it some time. If I could get the 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 printout, the the 3D pro, uh, pattern that has the the guide on it, the guideline already printed on it, I I could get there, but I'm having a real hard time. Because what I had, like the coil I, I showed you, I posted pictures of, yeah. uh, is not anything close to what mm. 
what it is, what it's supposed to be. It's okay, a, let's let's move angle. to the next video. Oh, the apology of a twisted torus. There you go. That is the design that you want. That's the geometric shape of the circuits that you want. He's simply showing two circuits here. Uh, it would be it would be two on ours. He's probably wrapped that with one piece of wire. This would be two circuits on our coil. One circuit going clockwise, the other circuit going counterclockwise. Okay. This is this is the exact shape of our pattern. Yeah, that looks like it. That's that's our pattern. So if if you'll just look at this, see, everybody can do this. This man has you just left out a couple that. of steps. Yeah. Yeah, there's it without a, a in depth electrical background, you're not gonna see the little errors that that you need to understand in the magnetic field. These coils our 12 circuit coil, if you take all of the wires and make them end up in the center in the vortex and a little hole in the middle, that gives you a receiver coil. If you have all of your connections around the outside equator, that's a transmitter coil. Okay. So, is, is this all relative to the vortex engine, or is this a different conversation? No, we, we skip it. it, we, it well, it's a different conversation, but it's all relevant. Oh, okay. Yeah. It, I, I, I wasn't sure. Sorry, Larry. Yeah, that's okay. Right. This is just the proper pattern. If you want the the trolling motor motor uh, coil, excuse me, then you want them vertical. If you want a power coil. Then you want them horizontal, like is shown in the picture. Flat around the outside and inside, rather than knife cuts through the coil. So depending on the way you assemble your coil is the result you're going to get from that coil. Absolutely. Every different shape yeah. does a different thing. Yeah. And if you'll, if you'll note, he's got a spiral coil behind him with one circuit on it that takes three revolutions around the entire thing before it gets to the middle. Well, you know, I was I was picturing in my mind with car windshields and the different shapes they've used over the, you know, years they've made cars. And I, re I remember the one that was split in the middle and it was on an angle. And yeah. I always wondered why they build a car with a wind window like that. Does it break the wind better? <laughs> yeah, it's, what, it's what, not a flat surface for the wind to yeah, hit. That's, 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 wind that's, resistance. Aerodyn that's aerodynamics, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, well, it's it's somehow related. In my mind, somehow this stuff's all, like, tangled up in a big knot. And then I get people like you guys come along and untangle a little bit of the knot so I can get a better idea what's going on. Okay, you yeah. just opened up another door. This I was is, hoping. Yeah. <laughs> this is all about the aerodynamics of the magnetic field, which is Schauberger's work. Except Schauberger did it with water. Anything you can do with water, you can do with a magnetic field. Mm -hmm. So Schauberger showed us how to twist the pattern and make the water spiral. That's what this is. Yeah, I kind of got the idea it had something to do with um, how you direct your your uh, coil. Yeah. Because you can only get a result. If you do it a certain way, you get a certain result. So there's a number of choices. It's not infinite, it's, but there's a number of choices, right? Yeah. Well, can you give me a round number, like how many possible ways are there to specifically wrap a coil to get a specific end result? As many as you can possibly imagine. Wow. So it just depends on, well, how do you define, okay, 
Well, this is what I mean. First, it's like first you have to define, first you have to define your need. Uh huh. Okay, what do I want it to do? Right, do right, I, right. And then you do, got the shapes. Okay. Yeah. Do I want it to cut material? Do I want it to be a plasma mining machine? Do I want it to be an outboard motor? Uh, do I want it to spin a magnet? Uh, what what do I want it to do? And how can I make it do that in the easiest, best way? Okay, well, that is not going to turn a profit. So that is going to dissuade a lot of people from being interested. Why would ah, turn a profit? That, that doesn't make sense. Uh, uh, people are greedy, Rob. They want to own each other like stock. I like understand that. Cattle. How is it not going to turn a profit? I mean, whoever's building these coils would be the one who's going to turn a profit. No, no. no because it's not the goal. Isn't to make a profit. It's to give you, get you out from under big oil. Right. So I just, I'm just uh, the devil's advocate I here. Get it. But, uh, there, there's, some, there's some electronic equipment out there that requires a specific coil yeah. that puts out a specific amperage and voltage in order not to burn up their equipment. So right. that, and making that important, you know, and up front is what I'm saying. We've never heard this before as a layman. What? Yeah. You can eliminate the waste? I thought the waste was necessary to run the thing. Yeah, well, so we've been conned into not knowing any better, Larry. Yeah. As a collective. Yeah. yeah. And you're, you're this new voice, this guy that's going, hey, we can fix this. <laughs> it's going to scare a lot of people away because they don't want it fixed. They like things the way they are. The the short wave guys will probably understand this. These coils are both receivers and transmitters. They are quarter wave antennas. The way we've got them set up in the phi arrangement makes it a quarter wave antenna. So you can do anything with it. It it will either project or receive. It will compress as well as expand. It will eliminate weight. You with with these coils in opposition to one another, it gives you lift. That's not that's not uh anti gravity. What it is is a magnetic repulsion. Oh yeah! Whoa! See, wouldn't that be the same thing to a guy that like me that's watched Star Trek? Maybe. I'm just saying, you know, I'm telling you that it is. You funny guy. I'm just saying that you know I've watched enough TV and movies in my my life to know what you're talking about because I saw him do it in Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, I've got NC uh, seventeen uh, NCC seventeen oh one A, a big diagram of the outside of the ship and all of the inner workings. I've, ah. I've had that since I was a little kid. Since that first came, not a little kid, but since that first came out. Yeah, I was old when it came out. But <laughs> you're an old school <laughs> Trekkie. <laughs> yep, you betcha. Cool. <laughs> That's one of Cirque's go-tos when we don't can't agree on what okay. to watch on TV. <laughs> All right, how are we going to build a holodeck, Larry? <laughs> that wow. is a that's a projection, and you can create matter with vibration with frequency. So uh, that's just going to be a whole bunch of frequency modulation boards everywhere. Just a whole bunch of coils and a whole bunch of frequency. Same with the replicator. People now already are recreating every element that there is plus some extra on the periodic table with electromagnetics. Okay, then I've got a really bad question for you. Hmm. All right? Because mm -hmm. this takes me to that thing about... Uh, an atom is 9.999 something empty, right? Yeah. No, okay, so now that, that is a scientific agreed on. Everybody goes by that's true. Right, Larry? Right. right. Yep. Okay, 
So I'm the onlooker, and I'm thinking, well, how come I feel solid? It, it doesn't translate in a simple way. Because I feel solid, and I look at things, and I pick things up, and then put them down and all that. But I think my interpretation of weight and measurement has been controlled for me to, to behave like this. That if I wasn't guided to see and, and do the things I do, I wouldn't, you know, I, it would be different. Not making sense? Yeah, you are a model oh, okay. okay, right. But my, my perspective of what something weighs, like if I was to pick up a brick, that brick weighs so much. Well, if, if we're mostly nothing, then the weight of that little brick, point, you know, whatever one of the, the hall, it's got to be huge because it all looks compacted to the, you know, to my eye. You know, what I'm seeing, it things are solid. It's not a compaction, it's a connection of billions and billions and billions of atoms all put right. together in one space. So where's the nothing go to? That, how do you measure nothing? I don't understand that. It's like a net. Yeah. The nothing that you think of in outer space as, as uh, dark energy or whatever, that's, that's the photons. That's the, the plasma field that's coming out of all the stars, making all that dark matter. It's nothing but a plasma stream that you can't see because there's no light shining on it. <laughs> it's not emitting light because it's a plasma stream. That means that all of what we think of as empty space is charged with electricity. It's potential. Yeah. All we got to do is drag a wire when we're out in space and we'll be able to collect all that to produce as much energy as you could ever want. That's faster than light travel. Oh, man. The 12 so cubes is a wormhole. We've been looking at all this stuff thinking we're being entertained when it's been there for us all the time, just told in the wrong order. Yeah. There's, there's nothing that we've created that has not been shown to us in the past. All mm. these coils have been shown to us. They're in cathedral windows, for goodness sake. Okay, so oh, in the glass, in the, in, oh, I'm sorry, Ralph. In, in the glass, in the in the round things that they have above the doors and stuff, in the arches, those are patterns for for coils. The flower of life wow. is a coil. Hmm. So when are we yeah, coming out with I, a coil that you put a dilithium crystal in the middle and then you don't need it. Make a warp. Beam. You don't. You don't need it now. <laughs> you you've got your warp engine with three different coils. Yeah, I know. I was making a joke there. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. So this is similar. To, <laughs> so this is similar to solving a puzzle, then, in a sense. If you just do these things in the correct sequence, the end result changes, and you get a better result than if you do it this way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, like a recipe for making a cake, only on an electrical level. Yeah. Just exactly. Okay. Well. I think the more people that could find out about this, the more people that would be interested would step up. So I think we should uh, make a point of doing that. Hey, if you got questions and shit, throw them at Larry and Rob. Let's, yeah. Let's get people aware of this stuff so that they can make one. I'm all for the questions. Ah, exactly. Yeah, I'm, Cause, yeah. I'm ready for the uh, production. Kids. Well, there's so many people on this planet. You're bound to, you know, you're bound to run into people like yourself. You just got to get out there and keep talking. Yeah. Whoa. I'm telling you, I do it all the time. I go out there and I get stuff, you know, and communicate with people. But this is this is different. What we're doing on this radio podcast. I don't think I could talk to anybody in physical life, except except Cirque and. She's not real interested in this in the first place. She's got yeah. anything. Yeah. yeah. So uh, one of my friends will it all the time. Yeah. But she has a more scientific mind than I do, so she understands you more clearly than I do. But 
doesn't have that. I want to build one thing going on. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, you're gonna, I'm looking for people that, you know, hey, check this shit out. This is this is incredible. And how many times in your life have you ever got a chance to say that out loud without being wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Because it was only a band, or it was only a movie, and here you are with this coil idea. And like you said, you're not the only one. There's lots of people out there doing it. Oh, yeah. Doing right, lots of right. different things. Okay, so there, then it's possible to do it 97% correctly and still get a good result, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you, you can't really fail. You can only do, like, uh, partial of what's what's available you're only hitting a certain percentage of it because you gave up <laughs> yeah. yeah all of them all of them will do something different you can wrap a piece of wire around your finger and that will make a coil and that will do something in fact a radio tuner for the old am radios was a stick of carbon with like a pencil with wire wrapped real tight all the way around it in a single layer, and it had another wire that was movable that would move back and forth it just to change the station. Yeah. So the number of, the number of wraps gave you your frequency. Absolutely. And that, 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 uh, uh, yeah, yeah, well, you, uh, as you move across the coil with your other mm-hmm. wire. Right. It, and that's what you things do. Right. And then the lack of uh, needing to repair shit is phenomenal. It's like when yeah, Henry right. Ford made yeah. Oh, when, when Henry Ford made the hemp mobile in 1943. But could, well, you'd only need one car in your whole lifetime. Yeah. People didn't want that. That would be like being a communist. Everybody driving the same car and all that kind of shit. But what they didn't think about it could have made every car using hemp that would have had the you know the illusion of hey look at us we're different when you're just doing is buying a bigger or smaller car the yeah. quality wouldn't wouldn't change and see that's what we lack as a as a, a collective is people want to make profits and succeed and all this horse shit and then there's me I, you know I want to get along with people but I'd like to see it easy for everybody and I don't think they really want that. It's so obvious to me what we're doing is wrong. And there's better ways. But they go, well, this is all there is. Take it or, you know, don't. Wrong. Wrong. No, you don't think so? No, that was in your answer to the question, this is all, or the statement that this is all there is. Wrong. Well, at the moment, what's available to the to It's the not all there is. Public, it's, not all so there, it's all they're offering. Right. Well, okay. Clean it up for me, Rob. You're welcome. I don't mind a little, you know, a little help when I get stuck in the corner. <laughs> well, hey, man, but you yeah, know, this I, is some, uh, yeah, dig up some deep thoughts in me about, you know, like when uh, Larry was talking about the different, you know, horizontal coil, vertical coil to get a different result. And I started to see shapes. And what does this shape do if you put that shape together? There you go. I, well, when I was a little kid, I was about 10, I guess, I was doing a book report, and I wanted to draw a picture of a spider or something into the damn book, you know, my report. So I looked through the encyclopedia or some damn thing, and I found a picture of a spider, and I looked at it, and I drew the, the spider from the book to, my, to the paper. And I found out that day I could draw. I never even thought of it. You know, what I would do with, like, this coil concept, if I had something to, to do, I would do it bigger. So it evolved into I, I could do the small picture, and then I could do a bigger picture of the same picture. Right. Well, it, there's no way to, I don't know what, how I got the gift or whatever. My, even my wife said it's a really unusual way to draw, the way that I start my drawings. But the end result is the same picture, but just bigger. Yeah. Well, it's the same thing with the coil. Couldn't you practice on a small coil and get the ideas worked out from that 
to work up to doing it with the, uh, you know, the right size door, co- uh, wire and the right I size the coil. The smaller the coil, the more, more difficult it would be. Wouldn't that teach you to do it better? I'm just curious because I'm learning. Well, the smaller Wouldn't the coil, the, the, the more, the less space you have to work with. Yeah, the little ones are hard. That little, middle gets yeah. really difficult on a little one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah eight the inches. Bigger, the okay. bigger coils are probably actually easier to wrap. Yeah, they are. Overall. So, so eight inches is about the size of a, a grown, a bigger man than me, a grown-sized man, 5'10 or so, right? Because I'm a little man, and I don't think my hand is eight inches. Your head. Oh, okay. No, my hand. Your hand? Not my head. Yeah. Size of my hand. I got a small hand. Fits over the mouth. <laughs> it's not eight inches. Yeah, it'd be a little bit Hard. bigger than that. Mm. Right, right. But mm, so Spread you're out. wrapping it's that with one. But you're wrapping that with one continuous piece of copper coil, right? No. The wire. No. Sorry. No. You six. Six pieces of wire. Okay, and how long are the six pieces? Twenty-six feet. Whoa! <laughs> Without fucking the wire up on the way. Yeah. Wow, that yeah, that has to be pretty much. And not only difficult. that, you're yeah. laying that down and then you're laying another one. You're laying that you're going around it nine times and each mm-hmm. each wrap has to be perfectly aligned with the other. Mm-hmm. Side by side, flat with no gaps, no overlaps or anything. And then you have to wow. run, 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 run okay. one in the other direction, right next yeah. to it, same thing. So the, the size is direction. probably just as good to practice on as, yeah, I get it now. Yeah, it I was, is about I, the smallest I would try to, I would want to do. Yeah, 29 feet of wire. Jesus Christ. What gauge wire? 26 feet wire. Yeah, 20 gauge. 20, okay, 20 gauge. It's at the, about the size of lead pencil, right? The Not the whole pencil, the lead in the pencil. Smaller, yeah. a little bit smaller than that, maybe. Yeah. Oh, well, sure. I'm going off memory. I mean, I haven't fucked with electricity in 30 years. But I had a blast when I did it. And the guy I worked for was cruel and had a sense of humor. <laughs> maybe a little bit thinner than a paperclip bar. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. And, and you can't scratch it or anything. you got to be that meticulous with it. Well, if you scratch it, that... Uh, takes the insulation off of it. That yeah. Makes a point. Uh, okay, okay, so it's now. insulated copper wire. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay, well, not, I, not insulated like you think. It's right. gypped. It's got a coating. Okay, yeah, yeah. 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 Is it, to the naked it's, eye? It's pretty it? tough. It doesn't just scratch off. You have to, to right. really. To the naked eye, it doesn't look like there's anything on it. Okay, all right. So I've more than likely have worked with it sometime in the past because. Yeah. It's kind of the way they have on uh, motors and the windings on motors. There you go. Like yeah, because copper is so soft. Kind of reddish-looking copper wire. Yeah. We used to call that a needle, but and now they call yeah. it magnet wire. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's a it's a real tough coating. It, it doesn't just yeah. scrape off. You got to really use and, a knife or something to get cut it. Okay. Right. And this was is refrigerated for 200 degrees centigrade. Yeah, that's what this is. And how hot do these electrical fires burn? When they do burn. How hot is a lightning bolt? Uh, Larry, don't answer a question <laughs> with a question. I'm already up to my ears well, here. Think, think, about, uh, think, about uh, uh, think about a welding machine. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's an electrical, that's a direct electrical short. To, and it melts metal. Well, that's what I mean. Is how hot is that? Hot? I don't know what the temperature is. Thousands of degrees. Uh, the the higher the voltage, the higher the voltage, the wider the space that you burn out of the wire when it shorts. Ah, okay. you can tell how much voltage went through it by the gap between the wire ends. So if you're running a 12-volt system and have an inch and a half gap in the wire that you burned out of your pancake coil, that means that you have a 3,000-volt spike. Now, that's not good, right? 
not good at all. But see, a lot of the guys that are doing this electronic stuff and the coils, what they're doing is setting up what's called counter EMF. That's electromotive force that's going in opposition to the supply. It's bucking it. It's it's hitting against it. All that's right, good, and you can capture that. But that's millivolts or milliamps. That's milliamps. Now, well, is that setting up counter EMS? The letters EMS. EMF is in front. F. Uh, okay. Uh, electromotive sure force. Electromotive force. So if I put EMF like that, is that a, a common e uh, electrical guy word? Yeah. Wording? Or, okay. Yeah. Just checking for the notes. Yeah. Uh, but see, they're capturing the that. They're making, right? Well, yeah, they're they're capturing that, but that's the stuff. That's the bad stuff that their system is creating through the energizing that causes a spike, de-energizing that causes a spike the other way, and and they're catching these spikes and saying, "See, I got over unity." Well, that ain't over Unity. You're just screwing up your equipment. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's my my feelings about it only. Uh, I know a lot of them are, are just really proud that they got 7 milliamps over what they put in. But did you put a watt meter where you're taking power out of the wall to provide energy to the equipment that you're testing? No. So it's like credit in, in the financial world. Does that compare to this, what you're explaining? Yeah, like they're exactly. borrowing it from something that's already there, so you're not making anything. Yeah. Using something else. <laughs> and and if they would check with a watt meter of, of what they're using to power the machines, oh. like, the, like the voltage uh, machine that they use to provide their voltage, that draws energy. Now, from they only measure from the machine to, that provides their voltage out rather than from the wall out. So they're actually never producing any more than they consume. <laughs> but it looks good. <laughs> yeah, it looks good on paper, still. man. It's like one of those David Copperfield magic trees. I'm I'm not saying that some of the guys haven't got it. A lot of them do. But some of the guys aren't really measuring what they're using as opposed to what they're producing. Yeah. Right. Like the uh, the solar panel kind of. Oh, God, yeah. Because when I get into arguments with people about the the alternatives to the energy, they always tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. But my understanding of the wind and, and the solar power with the panels is the stuff that they use to create it is based on oil. <laughs> and then it all degrades really quickly. It doesn't even support itself. In, it took more to make it than it produces in the electric. Absolutely. But, but our modern, everyday guys don't. They don't believe that. They see it differently. But no, math. Well, if you're, if, if I'm sitting in my living room, sending Rob Works electricity from here would be stupid, wouldn't it? Because I'd have to spend a whole lot of energy to send it to him. Before now, yes. Okay. The way that we operate today, I yeah. mean, I'm sure you could do this wireless too. It only makes sense. Just how is beyond me. But we got wireless phones and pictures. And I tell you, I can take a picture of Denmark and send it, plug it into my computer and send it to New Mexico in a matter of minutes. And I'm not good on a computer. <laughs> know what yeah, I mean? You'll be able to do there in a matter of minutes. Right, exactly. That's why I believe what you say, Larry. And then you know, Rob, be there and, and put the picture in his hand. <laughs> yep. Yeah, but Rob's the guy that's actually physically doing the things that you're talking about. So it's weird for me to be involved in this. I've never done this before. You're, you're, you're here for show continuity. 
Yeah, but you cracked my wheel. You know, when I was a salesman, if you could crack the person's negative spot and get through that, yeah. you could almost always guarantee a sale. Maybe get, yeah. you know, buyer's remorse, but once people you like head nod and yes, get them to sign. Exactly, but people like a positive thing. I just think we're in a time right now where we're not aware of that. <laughs> you know, we need a little good news. Something's got to give. Because, you know, the alternative is insane. So it's about time for it. Let's get some free energy people moving. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I'm doing my best. I'm afraid Larry's <laughs> going to come out with a kit before I get one of these things wrapped. <laughs> I'm certainly hoping so. Now that we've got some of the bugs worked out in, in the whole device, yeah, before all we had was something that made power. Yeah. Well, that's that's really neat. Now we've got something that will make power for absolutely anything. Yeah, now, we, you, have, now you have a full-blown concept. Uh, yeah. Now, now we can interface with any product out there. Now you need a prototype. Got it. Da, 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 da. Yep. All the coils are made. It's a matter of getting them all in the same spot. We we've got three, four, five, six different coil styles at six different places around the world. <laughs> Is is this just the designs of the coil, or are they finished? Yeah, actual physical coils. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got physical coils. So you have people already at at the ready that are are willing to go through the wrapping process. And they, oh, our R and D it. department is going nuts. The twenty one guys I meet with on Monday from FESIG mm -hmm. are they are amazing. Mm -hmm. These guys, everybody's got a different field and everybody is really good in their field and they're picking up some of them are picking it up and running with it our 3d printer guy has come up with three new designs on his own and he doesn't even know what they'll do it's just he made he made the form so that it would be easy to wind and change them oh. with his concept huh. so and you know, like I said, every coil will do something. And these are the ones. One of them is the Saturn coil, the knife coil. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's just amazing. <laughs> it's, it leaves you speechless. Isn't that one of those? Yeah. You've been waiting your whole fucking life to do yeah. this. And now that you did it, you don't know how to tell anybody what you did. <laughs> yeah. I can't That's what I'm hearing. You, I, so much you can't talk about. I understand that. But it's still what a it's like sci fi. This is really it's interesting. Yeah, it's <laughs> like being in on the cutting edge or something, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it really is. It, I'm a fly yeah, I'm a fly on the wall. Well it it takes a long time to get somebody out of what they were taught. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost better to take a, 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 a novice greenhorn. Like me, yeah. yeah. That that's what the three D printer guy does. He's not electrically minded at all. <laughs> and but, but he does the math equation for a different application. Yeah. And flops into the results of something you're looking for. <laughs> yeah, and and he wow. can have he can have it programmed and printed within a week. Mm -hmm. uh, the See, man's genius. Well, and. People have been conned into believing all these years about how stay within your group and all this kind of crap. And I've always been one to think, you know, I don't know how to do that. This guy knows how to do this. This other guy knows how to do that. The three of us get together. We can do this. Yep. So, yeah. Well, now I get to do it on the Internet with something huge. <laughs> In a sense. I mean, I'm taking credit for your work because I, I do this shit with you on the radio. <laughs> Hell yeah. But I feel a part of it. I'm not looking for money or fame or nothing. I'm I'm pleased as shit with where we've got to this yeah, moment. Just to be aware and yeah. get on it. Yeah. Yeah. And looking forward to the future and seeing the finished product. And that's a strange place for me to be because even people close to me, they don't see me as a positive 
sparkly kind of guy. <laughs> I know you find that surprising, but they don't. Right, honey? <laughs> anyway. Well, uh, I'm not easily sold on a what they would say, a new, improved. <laughs> right, right. Because when I was selling, that meant bend over and sans shake, my friend. Mm-hmm. Yep, yes. She just rolled over my foot, leaving the place with your order. <laughs> so, uh, I'd like to see Larry get there. That I just have a cool. $64 million dollar question. When is what? the finished product going to be completed? Yeah, which one? We don't want to make any products. All we want to do is interface with everybody else. Right. Ah, see, there you go. At least I start with. Okay, Beautiful. Well, yeah. Let's, okay, let's say, let's rephrase the question. When is the the open source uh, that, yeah. direction uh, that part. manual and safety manual and all that stuff going to be ready? Um, or is that still... The, the way it's going right now, I believe, within about six months. Wow. Cool. Okay. Wow. Um, 2020 won't be a flop after all. <laughs> so, so the the I I think the I think the safety manual will be written. I think the instruction manual will be written. Uh, I more than likely during that process we'll come up with kits. Uh, I know that that uh, the of course the 3D printer programs are written. And he's still, he's perfecting those even, uh, making it where it's going to be easier to, to run this program and then wind the coil is going to be a lot easier than the way we're doing it now where it's got to be glued on every inch of the way. Right. Uh, wow. So you've beaten all that too. We're trying. Wow. Um, and this guy right. is really good at that sort of thing. I think he's going to make it. Uh, the new pattern that he's that he's working on is what I think is going to make a better motor. It's horizontal on the outside, and as it comes up over the coil, it turns 90 degrees and knifes into the center of it. Uh, that's a slowly twist as well as the triple Mobius. Okay. So that'll that'll be a, a, an outboard motor for sure. This other Saturn coil, I know that that's going to work as an outboard motor, but I think the one with a slight twist in it, this horizontal to vertical, will be even better. Yeah. So we over that this morning. Okay, Larry. Now again, with one of my weird questions, because electricity and water are not known to be partial to each other, right? Yeah. So how do you operate an electric thing to do what you're describing? I mean, it, is it a motor within a box that controls? No, the- no, no, not at all. No. You you insulate the wire, the connections where you hook it onto the battery. The part that goes into the water is insulated just from the insulation on the wire, and the coil has insulation on its wire, so there's no electrical charge that gets into the water, only the magnetic vortex created. Whoa. Ta-da. Well, because I'd be worried about, you know, getting shocked or something, I suppose. Don't worry about that. That'll bring the fish up. Then you yeah, but all I'm, you I'm not a fisherman. That's, oh. that's you and Rob. Well, it'll bring the earthworms up out I of the just do, I just do the eating when they catch that shit and cook it. <laughs> but, nah, I'm, I don't have... I had the killer instinct for about one day in 1979, and I retired. <laughs> so, nah, fishing and hunting ain't my thing. Okay, it's fishing report time. Uh-oh. Because Uh-oh. And here we go. Sunday, beautiful Sunday. It was a beautiful day, and the wind wasn't blowing real bad. It was fun time fishing. I only caught two. 
caught one that was about three quarters of a pound, little bitty baby bass. I felt sorry for sticking him in the face. Um, <laughs> but, but before that, <laughs> damn, <laughs> didn't mean to stick you in the face there, little boy. <laughs> no. Whoop! You go back <laughs> and get that. Dead. You weren't supposed to bite that. <laughs> And, wow. but and I'm laughing was, at it. Oh, my God. It must be but, a barbarian. <laughs> yeah, you're evil. But before that, I threw a plug out that was that floated and had a big backlash on my reel. Sometimes I mess up. And I was sitting there pulling it all out and finally got it where I reel all the slack out. And I just barely wiggled the plug. And an eight-pound bass ate it, I thought. And I had one big fight on my hands, couldn't turn the fish, went both directions, couldn't turn it. Finally, it got tired and came in. And that fish, it was a female that was loaded with eggs. It looked like she was about to explode. Oh, wow. But she just hit the plug to get it out of the way, and it caught her in the cheek. Uh-huh. Yep. But it turned her loose. I didn't hurt her. Let her back go, because she's going to be making lots more good quality bass for that lake. I don't keep anything that's spawning. Right, right. I and, see. and I only keep what I'm going to eat. Yeah, yeah. Hey! Right. There you go. Wow. I didn't know that. It's all about. Yeah, I would catch and release. I just I'm a one one one. I think if it's in my pocket, it's mine. <laughs> oh no, I I got. I'm just pocket. like a little kid. When I get a pull on the end of my line, everybody in the whole lake knows it. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yeah, that's me. <laughs> wow. Is it get the net? Get the net. The strange things humans do for entertainment. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. That, so that's, that was the fishing report? That was the fishing report. We only caught two, and one of them was little bitty bitty. Yeah. The other one was pregnant. pregnant. <laughs> yeah, very pregnant. Without her eggs in her, she probably would have only weighed five pounds. But she was so, close to eight. Wow. So you're more tied to the experience than the, the fishing part. Oh, absolutely. That's of it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I'd rather be out paddling a boat around on the lake than anything else. Yeah. yeah. And I love to paddle. But the I rest mean, of this work stuff that you've got to do. Ooh. Yeah. Well, Love you could it. afford, you could personally, you could afford not to bother with any of this and still live a comfortable life. Oh, yeah. And, I, I, and just be out there being Gollum out in the lake, yeah. <laughs> looking for fish, watching, you know, hovering over your precious. <laughs> exactly. So instead, I'm, hey, I'm really impressed that you uh, take the time at this point in your life to do what you're doing. Because, damn. <laughs> I'm not doing this for me. I've got all the stuff that I want. Yeah, I know. I know that. That's pretty much what I was insinuating. Yeah. That you're not a greedy bastard that's looking to get some. You're, you're trying to give back. <laughs> it's well, very. I'd, you, I'd like to make some money out of it. That'd be kind of sweet. But you're no. no Donald Trump, though. You, you wouldn't screw me over to get that money. So I don't know. Well, it comes slower to people that aren't willing to steal it. Well, let's uh, let's talk about how much this is going to cost. Okay. Okay. We'll right. run down some numbers. Um, Rob, you you worked it out for that eight inch coil. You, your the material for your donut that you three D printed was what ten bucks? Less. Okay, and the wire that you put on it, another ten bucks. Yeah, yeah, ten bucks. Okay, and a two dollar and fifty cent modulator. Uh huh. You've done it. A, a Faraday case to put it in for another 50 bucks. There you go. Yeah. Less than 100 bucks. Yeah. 
and the, and well, that's the, just for the one uh, an eight inch coil though. So. Yeah, that's that's for an eight inch coil. So you're getting thirty amps out of that eight inch coil. Yeah. In the old days, a house only had sixty amps worth of power in it. Yeah. So you can make four of these and get a hundred and twenty amps. And you normally probably just have either a hundred or two hundred amp panel in your house. Yeah. So the size of four eight inch coils and you're done. Yeah. But the, the what the one we're talking about is the the what you're calling the uh twelve squared coil. That's the one that will run a house. No, the the one that'll run the house is the normal twelve circuit coil by itself, or not by itself, but the twelve circuit coil, and another twelve circuit coil that fits down into the vortex. Okay, so that's it, just two coils. Two twelve circuit coils. Yeah, and, and that would fit inside the other one. Yeah. All right. What size are we talking about are, here? Because are you you're talking the cost to make two, right? Okay. Yeah, your big coil will be forty five inches on the outside. Forty five inches on the outside. Yeah, and then and that leaves what? In the Fifteen hole? inch hole. Okay. So, so that the coil, so that your eight inch coil can sit in the middle of it. So your your knife coil is an eight inch coil. Yeah. Okay. A.K.A. Saturn coil. Mm-hmm. Because of the magnetic field that it puts out. It okay. encompasses it encompasses the whole coil, and on the outside horizon, the outside equator, it projects a flat, linear magnetic field that's very, very thin. It's an amazing coil. Yeah. I'd like to see the pattern on that. We've got guys with the magnetic paper that shows that stuff, uh, and we we play with that every week. That's yeah, one of the yeah. We our meeting, our noon meeting, lasted in, or it started at one o'clock and lasted till eight thirty before I got off. Damn. Yeah, almost daylight for the guys in Europe. <laughs> so they're they're pulling all nighters for these calls. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and going to work the next day. Damn. That's passion right there, man. You bet it is. We've got, uh, yeah. we've got guys from Russia all the way around. No doubt. This so one, or two guys from Russia. Was the total cost of those two coils, was it 100 or was that for one coil? A 45-inch <laughs> coil is going to be a little bit more. Yeah. 12 circuit. Now that was for one. Yeah. Um, you're, you're talking way more wire. So well, right. We're talking 50, 50, 100 bucks worth of wire. And yeah, maybe $100 worth of wire. And then, uh, uh, the price of the material that you use to. I'm not sure how, how you would get the donut. That would be a. What have y'all made one of those? You said you got one of those made already. We, we haven't we haven't made the forty five incher yet. Okay, that's what next. What are you talking about making it out of? Uh, that one we're going to make a mold for. Yeah, a plaster mold. Just make plaster. Solid. Yeah. No. Well, it depends. I'm not sure. I'm not doing the mold. Okay. It um, won't be injection mold yet. Yeah, yeah, that's a pretty big size. Uh, it's too big. Wow, print. it's too big. That's too short of five feet. <laughs> Forty-five inches across, right? Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's, that's four foot and five inches. And what gauge of wire? That one will accept ten. That's yeah. ten. Yeah, ten gauge wire is good for thirty amps. And it will probably produce 120 amps out of that particular coil. This is going to make the whole thing in either a step up or step down coil, 
which means that not only will can it in, or does it increase the amperage, but it can either increase or decrease the voltage depending upon which coil you energize, how you wire it. Okay. They're mutually inductive, and with 12 circuits on each one of them, that means that you'll be able to get multiple amperages and multiple voltages off of each coil at the same time. Based on how it's wired. Mm-hmm. Huh. Have you thought about the concept of having a switchboard type thing so that... Oh, yeah. Yeah, every, everything is, uh, is in a, uh, is, uh, 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 a terminal strip. Yeah. So yeah, all, every, all of your leads coming uh, out go into a, you know, block, terminal block. Yeah. yeah. And then you can, uh, rewire basically try different configurations of wiring absolutely yeah and uh, even and i know you don't want to like this idea but you could even introduce a circuit board uh <laughs> to modulate between different wiring that's what the mosfet is when we replace that with the nine circuit coil and so, yes so you can do that with a coil okay <laughs> yeah. Larry said, I don't need your electronics. I got coils. <laughs> That's right, because your MOSFET at high frequency is going to burn out. Your MOSFET yeah. with spikes coming through it is going to burn out. You yeah. can't burn coil out. I mean, you can, but it'd take a whole gob more than burning that MOSFET. Yeah. So. You can get a 3,000 volt spike through these things, and it won't hurt anything. But you won't get it because you're supplying everything with clean power. Yeah, you're not that means the voltage and amperage start at the same time, and you don't get a spike. That's what the spike is. It's because the voltage and amperage doesn't start at the same time. It takes a whole bunch more power to start it, and when it drops out, it booms all that power back in. So, yeah. Did you see Doe's question, Rob? Is Rob getting 30 amps? No. I have not finished a coil yet. He's coilless. I am. I am <laughs> coilless. He can't drop his coil. Uh, I, I got stopped in my tracks. Well, uh, sometimes uh, that's good, though. Gives you I'm a chance still to trying think. to figure out how to get this proper winding... Uh, angle. Ooh. Because what I've got ain't anywhere close to right. Huh. You'll get it now because you've got a proper picture to look at. I just don't explain things well. Well, even even with the picture, I'm still having difficulty <laughs> because uh, what I see is three bands going around this thing. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And that's what there is. But in each one of those bands, there's a circuit going one way and a circuit right. going the other way. But that's two circuits each. Yeah. But there's. But the the yeah the verbal explanation is always a little yeah. bit different than paper yeah, anyway. It's, it's just hard hard. I've never met too many people I don't in life. How they meet up in the back and go around, and because it looks like it's one. Well, it actually, it looks to me like it's one band going around three times. Yeah. <laughs> now, is that an optical illusion made yeah. by finished product? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. That's what you're explaining. Well, because we've seen magic tricks, <laughs> but we were we were prepared to know that's what they were. When you saw it, you were told, oh, you're going to see this, but it's not really the way you've been taught to see it. It's going to be a little different, like you're explaining. Yeah. So and I'm trying to make it uh, like an example to see if I was close to what, what you're talking about. And everybody that's, that's making these coils, if, if you're making rodent coils or vortex coils, whatever you want to call them, ABBA coils, uh -huh. make a starship coil. 
It's what? exactly the starship coil pattern, but the starship coil is flat and a projector coil only. So you put that shape, that same exact pattern, if you expand it around a toroidal shape, it'll look just exactly like the one I showed you, Rob. It looks yeah. just exactly the same. Okay, so yeah, you guys and your secrets, uh, the, the mad scientists. I I put it down on paper, and it looks like a whole bunch of equilateral triangles going around in a circle. Whoopie pup. But mm -hmm. in real life, it's mm -hmm. a slow spiral like the Avatoras 8 1 9 by 9 nested vortices example. The, okay. next, the next video. Uh, oh, yes, the Avatoras. And that one, that one shows you not only the way to plot a 9 by 9 but the way the magnetic fields are going around it and the nested vortices in those patterns, the, the groups of, of electric fields that go and how they interact. That's a pretty good video. Yeah. I just wish it was 9 by 18 yeah, like the other one. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to watch all that. I didn't even just got them this morning. <laughs> So that's what I'll be doing. Have we got any questions from the peanut gallery? Uh, I'm, no. um, just Mostly for me today. I've been deeply thinking. <clears throat> but well, I mean, some of the stuff that you that you talk about makes sense to me in ways I don't really know how I even got there. Like the wind, the comparison to the windshield of a 1935 fucking car to the design of a coil to get a certain uh, reaction from the atmosphere it's in. So, hmm. you know, I must have been taught something that's buried in, deep down in there somewhere because a lot of this stuff is uh, simple. It's complicated when it, you get started doing math equations or algebra equations. I get a little left behind in that area. But I get the concept. You can't do this without doing that first. If you want to see any of these coils, study uh, medieval architecture. Mm. If, you, if you want to know how it fires, study the math of Solomon's temple. Solomon math. You're going to love the alien invasion. Yeah, it's going to be all our stuff. <laughs> yeah, see, I think we're really just reinventing stuff that they've got. It, that's, yeah. That's what the... And, what do they and call most of it is stuff that Hitler and his crew designed during the Second World War. Yeah. They just didn't have enough money to do it. Hey, Larry, you're going to save all the people. I hope. Poor Adolf, he took such a beating. <sighs> Poor guy. I mean, history really fucked him over really bad. And I don't think he did anything that anybody else in his position wouldn't have done. Took care of his people. Right. He really did. He he had a mm -hmm. lot of good things, but, yeah. you know. So, but then he made the mistake of using the Jew banker to finance it, so he got kind of fucked over at the end. <laughs> and that's the way it goes. Mm. I know that. Talk about people, man. Ooh. And I'm related to those buttholes. It's kind of sad. I could have been a nice thief, but the American I have not the Americans' mistakes was bringing Warner von Braun over here rather than his flying saucer people. Hmm. Well, I've okay. seen what links, what do they call that? Operation Paperclip? Yeah. That's we all. We brought the long over. Well, yeah, but I just think poor Adolf took all the shit for all the shit that everybody else did. Nobody remembers anybody but Adolf. What a, what a scam. Yeah, there was lots of sick motherfuckers involved with that shit. 
Yeah, Especially with probably, the medical experimentation and shit. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know, but I'm just saying that he took all the heat for all that in the public yeah. eye. The history. Yeah. Nobody knows what a Goebbels is, but they all know Adolf fucking Hitler. Why? Uh, Goebbels Why? want shades. See, I don't see. I've read. I've read. I've read things that say that the Anne Frank thing was a hoax. Yeah. Blah blah mm-hmm. blah. So uh, here we are in 2020. Nobody knows what a reality is anymore. We're all talking into our hands on the street. Yeah. <laughs> Checking our GPS to find out where we're going. You know, asking your hand if you can got any money left to buy some cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> well, because we all do it all electric now. Because yeah. we're all, you know, modern people. So, I call it being a slave to the system. Yeah. Like my addiction for this fucking internet. Kill mm-hmm. me faster so that I can have more convenience. Nah, I think I'm just a lazy slug deep down inside. <laughs> <laughs> and I like sitting on my ass. <laughs> It's been a bit, my life was a little busy, so it's it's nice to end it sitting down instead of running. You ready to just kick back and coast for a while now? Fuck yeah, and I got a, I got a wife that makes sure I, you know, I don't do, like, greasy shit food for too much. And she keeps an eye on me, so I can last a little longer. So when I start seeing greasy burgers and, <laughs> yeah. you know, big 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 things that are bad for me around the house, yeah. and I know it overstayed my welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the magic is gone. <laughs> so far, so good. That's good, man. Yep, we yeah. got an anniversary yeah, coming. You guys, you guys seem to have a good relationship, so. We, we got six years it. next week. Yeah. So that was a good reason for me to remember my anniversary while my wife was sitting next to me. There you go. Because things like that, I usually don't remember crap like that. So fuck, yeah, get, um, fuck. Um, yeah. Quick, get up and go mark it on the calendar so you don't forget between now and then. Right. Well, actually, it's also a national holiday that they have these, what do they call those? Sirens or what? That they go off on our anniversary. The warning sirens. Cool. Air raid. Yeah, the first certain day of May they test them, and sometimes it falls on our anniversary. Is they, you know, whatever day of the week that is. Oh no, she says the Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, ours are on Wednesday too. So are ours. But I can't see. I'll always be reminded. So what's the date of your anniversary? Seventh May. Seventh. Cool. Yeah. Oh, I was just sitting here looking at the calendar and went, oh, that looks familiar. What's next? <laughs> uh-huh. If I see the numbers on the computer, I remember. But if I don't, then I don't. I'm like just like a, a train seal. You know? I react to the things that I see, and I do what I'm told to do with them. But I think I'm free. <laughs> but I can read that date right there telling me what it is. But I, deep down inside, I think it's a load of shit. We've been conned. Yeah. You know, that today is not, indeed, the 30th of April 2020 in any fucking way, shape, or form. But according to the calendar that the governments chose to use, it is. But other uh, cultures will argue with it. No, no, you're not. 2020, you dumbass. Well, it's all relative to where you start at. So, well, does this kind of coincide with the you know dropping a coil format, the way we look at time? Yeah, I don't think everybody does it the same way. It's all based on your relative start position. Mm-hmm. What would that be? Well, somebody two thousand twenty years ago started counting. <laughs> yeah. Was that I guess that would be your people, not my people. My people think that the planet's oh. a little older than two thousand years. Some, some guy named Greg or something. Gregor Gregor or Gregorian. I don't Yeah, that's the Gregorian calendar. Whoa. But <laughs> well, I think time is man made. 
And I believe this, too, okay. that all the measurements of time, they're all man-made, too, so it's all bullshit. Mm -hmm. No matter how scientifically you prove crap to me, I don't really care about that. I just care about, does it work? <laughs> We're just tracking the sun, finding out when to get up and go to bed. <laughs> yeah. that, that's the well, fun part. The, the whole point of it was originally was when do you plant your crops, when do you harvest. Yeah. Um, yeah. When, so when, when are the certain animals the, going to be running and migrating and going here and there? And yeah, but they snuck in the eight-hour, the eight-hour work day, the forty-hour work week, the two-day weekend. All that shit's all bullshit. Oh yeah, that's all, man. Are you bullshit. insane? Yeah. You know, you know what? That's all just arbitrary. Uh, the only way I know what day it is dogma. Is looking, really? Looking at. This. Looking at the computer in the morning when I get up. Yeah. Other than that, how would I have a natural ability to recognize the date? <laughs> you wouldn't. No. Unless you're That's what I'm saying. That's unless unless you start counting. But if I don't. start counting, you make notches in a stick. Yep, mark it on the rock every time the sun yep. goes past that stick. Yep. But if I don't play this numbers and then date. you start figuring and things out and you start building. These circles mm. and things that line mm. up with the sun and the stars and the moon at certain times. And and then uh, 10,000 years later, people find it and go, oh, look here, these people were smart. Hello. Oh. Never in a million years. Never? Mm. Yeah. I hope not. Well, I don't really think much of the compliment. I think it's kind of a smart-ass thing to tell somebody. Yeah. Smart people already are. They don't need it. Yeah. So if you're... If you're <laughs> they already if, know. You know, yeah. It, so, you know, outside of just... It's just BS banter. If, don't hold any value with it. It's just a comment. You know? It's like, your hair looks nice. It's that shallow. Yeah. Because mm. if you're really intelligent, you already know that. And... Other people judging your intelligence is based on theirs. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> the shallow end of the pool looks so deep when you're six foot five. Yeah. You know? And when you're three foot tall, that's a different thing, isn't it? Yeah. I think Larry's smoking pot. Well, I hope oh, Larry's right. smoking some pot. Damn it. <laughs> Well, yeah, I'm if, back. See, if we hadn't been beaten to death with all this prohibition and rules and lies and stories about just about every fucking thing, right? We wouldn't be where we are now. Yet, the public doesn't seem to hold that opinion. And I get so confused. No, we'd have flying cars and teleporters and be exploring the galaxy. Right, but there's no profit in free, Rob. Right? You, you know they've yeah, been living in, the, yeah, they've been in, in debt for a hundred years. People are expecting to be paid now, <laughs> and there's nothing to give them. It's all gone. Well, just think about it. When you don't have to pay for your energy, that's going to give you a little bit of extra money. Yeah. What are you going to do with it? You're going to go out and spend it because nobody saves anymore. Where's it going to come from? They just borrowed another six trillion dollars. How much more can they do? Oh, that's so special. I hope they borrow another hundred trillion dollars. Well, yeah. Well, I don't see it's just creative accounting. I don't know why it bothers anyone. But you know, except that the price of shit goes up and you don't get a good product for a good price, blah blah blah. Yeah, but who's buying the bonds? You tell me, Mister. Yeah, I don't know. Um, the, the government, Fed, the Fed, the Federal Reserve that Trump just took over is buying all of the bonds. Or not all of them, but most of them. And what what's that going to do? That's going to bankrupt the Fed so that the Treasury Department can then be in charge of printing the money. Ew. So, so they have to be doing this forever. There's no, no, nobody will be accountable. Yeah. Okay. It, before before long, all debt, public and private, will be gone, completely mm -hmm. gone. Excellent. What will they replace it with then? The Federal Reserve or the the National Treasury note. 
Who will own that? Will that be just like fiat currency? Where no, it won't be fiat it? currency. It'll be gold backed. It'll be resource backed, pegged on the price of gold. Right. Well, how, what will you use as a user to represent your gold holding? The treasury note. So it's still fiat then in the end? Uh, no, because each treasury note will have an absolute value like Bitcoin. Mm, and it well, will to the value of gold. Yeah, but we got manipulated, Larry, over the last hundred years about all this gold standard shit to the point of where I don't trust any of it anymore. Yeah, but you could take a twenty dollar bill into the bank and get a twenty dollar gold piece for it. That's the difference. Well, right, but that's where we were, and that's what they took away from us to give us what we have. That's what they took away from us to confiscate the gold. Right, and the younger people do not understand, younger than us, half our age, 30, 35, they don't have the life experience that we have handling silver coins, and, you know, paper that, that said Federal Reserve note payable to the bearer on demand, not this in God we trust nonsense. That died in yeah. the 50s. Yep. Yeah, the difference yeah, well, between what you're talking about, fiat is merely means by decree. In other words, somebody says this is worth something, and uh, by God, you're going to accept it. That's fiat. Um, what we're okay, talking, but what you're the talking future about, market, what you're talking about is a warehouse receipt. Right, but I'm just saying that the futures market has warped my opinion of commerce to this. Oh, yeah, level. It's, it's all bullshit. To where I'm just so fucking bored of it. Yeah. That explaining it to me at this point is just more uh, fantasy. Yeah. Because whatever we're doing well, is a reason. They, uh, can, they can manipulate it all they want, but gold and silver and all the other metals and commodities of all, all stripes and colors uh -huh. have value. Everything has value. Even the paper dollars have an intrinsic value. It's not much it's paper, <laughs> but that still has a value. You can you can use it to light a fire with. That there, it, it has a value. <laughs> it's just not the advertising well, value. Paper. <laughs> it still has the value of paper. I mean, people go down and buy reams of paper to stick in their papers. Sure. You know. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Uh, I still um, got a roll of Obama we, toilet paper. Yeah, we just had a big run on paper. Um, wow. Recently. In the form of rolls. They could cure that in six months. So, um... You know that, right? What's that? That paper problem. Just grow some hemp. Yep. Oh, yeah. It, won't. Well, Takes it was less a problem. Time. It, wasn't a, it wasn't a supply problem. It was a supply chain problem. It was a bottleneck. Uh, because see, we haven't had... Stuff. Yeah, we haven't been hit yet here where we're at with that. Yeah. So, anyway, that's all. But I figure it will come eventually, but I don't know how. I'm not that smart, you know, where I can identify the enemy from 3,000 miles. Right. I just know he's out there and he's come. Yeah. But I don't really well, know what he's going to look like when he gets here, either. I don't, uh, but it will be financial, right? I'm sorry, no. I'm not at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> It'll just be an illusion. I, well, yeah, to me, but there's still people in the world that work. You know, they have jobs and responsibility and uh, these things that come along with, you know, living. Yeah. How seriously you take them, I don't know. Some people are, like, you know, talking about there's milk. There's a lot of people that are they're seriously impacted, yes. Yeah, and I don't know. It's just another topic to me. Um, life. Life. Don't go to this fortunate to have been set up before all this shit happened, so. Oh, yeah. Uh, big time. Sure. I mean, I'm in good shape, but. Other people aren't. Right. And the government yeah. is going to be their, the thing that fucks them the hardest. Yeah. And they're they're trying to push people into dependence on them. Yeah. Yeah, and that's or lose that's, all your shit to them. You either you yeah. surrender or you, you lose. Get yeah. the fuck out. Yeah. Wow. You become dependent. That's what all this uh, free money is, uh, you know. 
free uh, money. That's an, a an enjoyment. <clears throat> what he calls it. Uh, yeah, it's just all we're getting people. Uh, well, this whole thing, the damage is done. I mean, there's thousands and thousands of businesses already gone. Uh, that aren't coming back. I mean, it's already too late. And this is a fact. This is not just somebody's opinion like this corona crap was in the first place. Yeah, well, everybody, everything's been shut down. So um, find any small business that uh, can go for a month and a half with no income and they're done. <laughs> they're done. You know, they're, they're, most of them are leasing equipment and uh, you know, buildings and overhead, and, you know, they got bills coming in, whereas, you know, the money, the money just stops, so. They, they're stuck. They don't have any choice, so they're losing everything. Yeah, it's really going to hurt a lot of people. I don't really know how they're going to correct that. Yeah, we're just, we're just, we haven't even begun to see the, the full ramifications of what this, what the damage of the reaction to this, fake or not, it doesn't matter. There could be a real virus out there. It doesn't matter. It's obviously not much worse than the regular flu, if any, if you believe the numbers, even. But all that aside, it doesn't matter. The damage that's been done by the reaction to this thing yeah. Is, yeah. Is, right. is, is barely begun to show its face. Yeah. Oh, yeah, a couple of months down the road. We haven't even begun to see the ramifications of what this shutdown tyranny has caused. Nope. The vast majority of the women are going to be pregnant and having babies in nine months yeah, and out of the workforce again. Yeah, that's what they're saying. Hmm. A new baby boom. It's going to be, every kid's going to be named Corona. Yeah, if they're not all sterile already. Yeah. Ooh. Sorry for that dark thought, but. Well, I mean, yeah, I'm beyond all that anyway. I'm like 9,000 years old. I mean, old. The, the, the birth rate's already. Uh, Way down. Time lows. Yeah. You know. Mm. So I thought well, they're always harping on keeping the population down. You know, that Bill Gates guy wants to kill it all. Bunch of us. Yeah, and they, they, about it they've too. been working on it for decades. Uh, if not the guy sure. brags about it like it's a fucking funny thing to murder people. Yeah. And the public stuck in the city, it's shit up like it's cool. I'm so angry. Ooh. Thousands of children died in Africa from his, from his vaccine. Yeah, not only Africa, but he took uh, 500,000 out of India, crippled them with polio or something. Some vaccine, polio vaccine. I, so so much of this shit. Can't even identify it anymore. It's just shit. Yeah. I got a shit vaccine, man. Yeah. I mean, what are these idiots thinking is in a fucking vaccine that you want in your blood? If it's not already in your blood, you don't want it in your blood. That's not, that's crazy shit. Yeah. Why don't you just go eat out of a toilet, too, you dumb shit? <laughs> If you want to build up an immunity, go out, play in the yard, get muddy, get dirty, walk in the creek. Grow a fucking garden. Yeah. It, Damn. Go cut down an old guy's tree that's bothering them. You know, be a part of something. Oh. People, if you offer to help people, most of them will turn you down. And every once in a while, there will be somebody that will go, yeah, I could use the help. That's my experience with it. I can use the help, but I don't want to admit that I can't do it anymore. Ah, see? <laughs> there you go. Oh, and then still, while you're doing it, you do you can do it. It's just a little bit more painful now, right? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. still, you still do shit. It, uh, yeah, life it's is a contradiction in so many ways. I'm as good once as I ever was. And then, on the other hand, I could use another 10 minutes of sleep. <laughs> yep. You just got up. <laughs> I know. I need a nap. Speaking about 10 minutes, isn't that about all we got left? Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness gracious. Where does the time go? 
Well, round, you guys round covered and round. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, you covered quite a bit of territory, and there were links for the show for uh, people to check yeah. into. A lot of information. I mean, this is a uh, this is like a work in progress in the first place. So we don't know what we're gonna go, what we're gonna even talk about until we talk about it. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I've got lucky with the questions today too. I was all proud of myself. You did good. Yeah, I get a gold star and everything. <laughs> Grim says time got sucked into a black hole. <laughs> no. <laughs> Fucking Pink Floyd was right. Uh, time is all relative to where you are in space. Hmm. And time and space is the same thing. And that would be what? Man-made? <laughs> dark, <laughs> dark matter. Dark matter? <laughs> oh, and I don't want to be dark matter, Larry. Oh, dark matter, man. Oh. No, you be dark matter, Robert. We're all, we're all black on the inside, man. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. You know, you know why doctors wear those masks when they operate on you? <laughs> so they don't because get the when corona. they cut you open, they don't have to smell all that horrible shit that you're carrying around on the inside. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> oh, yeah. People think it's for germs and all this nonsense. It's not. It's stench. <laughs> you the smell like a no cow in the nuts of the beer is nasty. Go take a shower, you. <laughs> <laughs> that don't help. <laughs> Not in, well, see, see, to the, yeah, see, people that haven't had the pleasure of killing another living thing do not know what we were just talking about. And there's a lot of them. There's yeah. more of them than we would believe because yeah. <laughs> we have been hunter gatherers for a long time. People believe that their meat comes from the grocery store. Yeah, not yeah. delivered yeah. to That's the grocery store. That's where it comes from. They yeah, wrap it they, back. They make it up. They mix it up in a giant mixer <laughs> in the back. Like, Actually, like, they're doing yeah. that now. I know. Oh, uh, artificial oh, meat. Went green. Yeah. Uh, or something like that. Um, what's good? What's your favorite? Protein. Yeah. What's your favorite? What? What's green. your favorite? My favorite green. What? Your favorite soy with green package. I like the green. I like you seem to know about it. You must have tried it, right, Rob? Or are you just gonna gripe about it without trying it? (laughs) You see the movie? Yeah, just call me Hans. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I'm gonna put that shit in my mouth. How are you fucking nuts? Oh, thank you. Good Uh, lord, might as well just. I'm telling you, these idiots might as well just go out there and shoot themselves, some of them. They're out of their fucking minds with their controlling what other people do. It's yeah, insane. They do. Yeah, I uh, read the most horrible things in last month. Not a lot of positive came out of all of this that anybody talked about. The 98% of it's always been fucking blah, 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 negative, negative. And the little bit of good just got kind of shunned by the, all the bad. Right. Mm-hmm. But there was a lot of good that came out of this crap. You do know that, right? No. Well, if you're not a hoax believer, then you know who the believers are. Yeah. They split the fucking herd, man. These are the compliant yeah, ones. That's They'll be wearing masks. When I went out the other day. Gloves. They'll be insisting that you keep a distance because they are sadists and yeah. they want to. Uh, and then you're going to have the idiots like me that are on the that Lowe's the other day. It was packed in there. That parking lot was full. Yeah. And they wasn't stopping. There was no line. I mean, you just go on in. And, yeah, it was, you know, and it was about 50-50 people wearing masks. Mm-hmm. People not. But that's what I'm saying is you see who's compliant to the state. This is yeah. about nothing to do with yeah. health. That's your badge of, badge yeah. of, badge of, uh, Serfdom. Yeah. Ouch. Well, we are a very judgmental group here. Yeah. (laughs) Dropping a coil show tonight. I'll drop a coil. My goodness. Hmm. (laughs) And we actually agreed on that. That's pretty judgmental of us, I think. (laughs) I think maybe they ought to build a statue in our honor. Dropping the coil. Big coil right there for everybody to see. It shows you who the cowards are in the... the 
Sadly. Security. Or, or, okay, and then you have your extremes that are ill. I don't have a mask, Graham. And this made them more susceptible and more aware of their illness. But you can't define that by looking at people. It pisses me the fuck off. They should have a sign or a colored code or something so that, you know, the monkey you're looking at, you'll go, oh, they knew they were sick before the corona. They have a blue mask on. Yeah. Oh, they didn't know they were sick until after the corona. They got a pink mask on, something like that, <laughs> yeah. with a chart, you know, with a yeah. T-shirt to go with it that defines the color mask they're yeah, fucking wearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the ones that don't have it or didn't have it or don't know that they have it, they're just scared to fucking death of getting it. They get a yellow mask. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. I'll never get this. I'll never get that old, ever. I don't care. No way. <laughs> oh, it wasn't old. It was, it was young people and everybody. It wasn't just old people. Matter of fact, there was more, more old people not wearing masks. Yeah. 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 Well, here it's, it's the other way around. The few that are left holding on here are the older. Yeah. The ones that are susceptible to something. Yeah, the ones that have... And hey, you know what? If you have a, a, a health problem with your lungs or heart or whatever, oh, yeah. Yeah. and you might want to just do that all the time. Do what? Wear a mask. Be safe. Well, right. Well, that's Don't what I mean. It's all this I mean, right so that the weaker ones could identify themselves. Wow. And, you know, and if you're fucking sick, stay the fuck home. Don't go to work. That, I mean, <laughs> I, that, I had that pet peeve long before all this shit comes out. <laughs> I go into a restaurant and somebody's all sniffling and shit. I'll go and walk straight the fuck out. I don't care if I'm... I don't I'm not I'm laughing at you, Rob. I'm laughing with you. Yeah, I mean, it's stupid. Yeah. I know, I know. And, I've, and, I've been in the restaurant You know, all these work. practices that they're talking about, oh, we're, we're, we're trying to do... These people should be doing... Look, if you're sick, stay the fuck home. Well, and, and what's you know? just funny is... Don't go when, to your you know, fucking job at a restaurant and fucking give that shit to everybody you fucking serve it to. Yeah, but when I got my vegetables at the grocery store today, yeah. I had to at least rub shoulders with people to get past them because yeah. we're in a smaller... Yeah. Nobody shot me or called me names. They just, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you there. Pardon me. Excuse me. You know, yeah. It's polite. They're just polite. Yeah. But they were all crowded. But then when you get to the fucking cash out. <laughs> yeah, then they're they all you. six feet apart. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's like <laughs> I'm laughing every or time there, I go. Or there. there's, a, there's a line six feet back from the <laughs> register. And then they're packed in line behind that. <laughs> you know, so every the, line, the line is just packed. But... but the, la the next guy in line is six feet away from him. And everybody handles, the cashier handles everybody's food. Yeah. And so and what the... Money, yeah, and any money. There's there. no virus, people. This is yeah. not the way you're being explained. That's all. Yeah, <laughs> there's some... Well... Uh, yeah, it, there's something. Like I said, you, virus yeah. or no virus, it's, uh, the numbers I like add, uh, yeah. it, it, You know... Sure, there may be a virus, so what? Ninety-eight uh, percent. The damage, the damage that it's done is nothing compared to what's the reaction to it has been. Yeah. Well, that gives you guys two minutes. You guys got anything to, you want to close up with? That uh, I'll just mute down here on my end. Um, and thanks a lot, Larry, for letting me uh, do this with you. And Rob works. I have more fun than the both of you together. <laughs> well, I'm kind of surprised you still have me come back. No, no, oh, yeah. No. Surprise. Uh, Take us away, Uncle Larry. Yeah. I'll see you guys next week. All right. The dogwoods are blooming. The red dogwoods and the white dogwoods are in full bloom and full color. That means that the bass are on the beds now. Get it. Let them, let them go if they're big. Keep them if they're little. Only keep what you're going to eat. But yeah. now it's the time to be out there fishing if you're going to be. Right. Our dogwoods are already bloomed. They've stopped. Yeah, that's because you're a, a month south of me. Yeah. Seven hours. Yeah. 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 But now in, now in central Missouri is the time to, to be bass fishing. They're on the beds and... 
the rest of them are just out there waiting. That's it. <laughs> waiting to be caught. Like I said, all the keep you're going to eat. Yep. So. It's been that, fun. Yeah, it's been. I have. I always enjoy this. And I, and I try to learn something by paying attention. Yeah. And every every once in a while, something stays. It's just a couple. Just the guys <laughs> having conversation about things that most people don't talk about. Yep. Should I just go ahead and send the notes in to Grim, or yeah. do you guys want to know what they are? No, nah, just go ahead and send them in. Okay, got it. All right. That way you know where I'm at, so we don't have any hang-ups here. Okay, right. done. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for listening, and we will see you next week.